What a crap full of fuck platypus. Shots of Sub and commentaries. Hey guys, it's Shots of Sub and here with a brand new commentary. This one I've been wanting to do for a while now. It's on Silent Rob's Mega Man reviews. So just to elaborate, Silent Rob did reviews of Mega Man's 1 to 9. They're all short and he pretty much just showed one level for each game and he didn't even get any footage for Mega Man 7, 8 or 9. Because he said, and I quote, I don't feel like getting the footage, and if you don't like it, you can suck on my butthole. Yeah, not only does it show his laziness at making reviews, but it also shows that he comes off as a complete dick. Now, I'm only going to focus on his reviews of Mega Man's 2, 3, and 4. Because for Mega Man 1, I didn't really have much to disagree with on it. And as for 5 and 6, if I did them, I'd probably just end up repeating myself. So, let's see what Silent Rob has to say about Mega Man games. One year after Mega Man 1, this game is probably one of my favorite games of all time. They basically took Mega Man 1 and... Okay, I'm not one to nitpick, but you should probably turn up the volume on your commentary, because right now it seems round about the same level as the music. If you do that, people will be able to hear you better. Turn it into a monster. Okay, you turn the game on, and automatically, amazing song starts up. A fucking storyline, a story segment pops up, which Mega Man 1 did not have. I'm telling you about Wily and his revenge plot. With a fucking cityscape in the background. And then suddenly this fucking camera starts panning up real slow. With this music building up. Uh, we can see that, you know. What is this, reviews for the blind? And fucking, there's Mega Man on the top of the building, standing there looking badass. Why is he on top of the building? Because he's fucking Mega Man, he does whatever the fuck he wants. Fuck you, okay? Better get used to that foul mouth, because he's going to be swearing. A lot. His hair's even out, he don't give a fuck. Okay, he's fucking Mega Man, man. No, I believe it's just Mega Man. I don't know of this fucking Mega Man which you speak of. He's ready for some shit to fucking pop off. This fucking game is badass, people, okay? You'll fucking notice off the bat that you have two difficulty modes. Actually, there's only one difficulty mode. Really? Because unless I'm seeing double here, I can see two different difficulties. Normal and difficult. Difficult. If you fucking play it on normal, you're a fucking pussy and I'll fucking kill you. Uh... Oh boy, here's where the ignorance begins. Because he's apparently such a hardcore gamer, he reckons that anyone who plays it on normal are pussies. I play the game on normal, you know, because I find it to be a bit more laid back. Not everyone can handle the same difficulty levels. Normal mode is for the more casual gamers to enjoy. And besides, saying you're going to kill people who play it on normal? Wow, that's real mature. Not! Okay, normal mode is basically a pussy mode they made for US gamers, um, because they thought the game would be too hard. Um, is the game too hard? No it's not. Fucking play it on difficult, you fucking pussies. Well, people did complain about Mega Man 1 being too difficult, so I think Capcom wanted to offer a slightly more tame difficulty to appeal to the more casual crowd. And besides, normal still offers a reasonable challenge in my opinion. But I guess that's nothing compared to the holy hardcore gaming skills of Silent Rob. And also, for you hardcore, nobody is forcing you to play on normal. If you don't like it, play on difficult. So, why even complain about it? Off the bat, you'll notice eight robots instead of six. Um, it doesn't really make too much of a difference because this game is a lot easier, so you'll blow through it way quicker than Mega Man 1. Um, I usually start on Metal Man, um, but you'll notice like the Robot Masters are much better. Um, 
they take their face portrait instead of like just their character sprite for the pictures. And it's just, it's a better game. Metal Man is also one of my favorite robot masters of all time. And two seconds into the game, there's already more innovation than any of Mega Man 1. Um, this whole, this whole level is like on conveyor belts. You even fight the boss on conveyor belts. Um, the music, just, the music in this game makes me want to fucking come. Oh yeah, it wouldn't be a silent Rob review without some sort of sexual reference to once again try and make him sound badass. I mean, I can't even tell you people. There's a reason why this game is one of the most remixed soundtracks of all time. Every song in this game is just expertly crafted and amazing. Um, it's just fucking awesome. Um, there's a lot of flicker in this game, as you can tell from that, that part right there, but there's not so much as it really hurts the experience at all. Um, Mega Man 3 had, um, more problems with it, in my opinion, than 2 did. I'll be honest, apart from Hardman Stage and Wily Stage 2, Mega Man 3 I didn't find to have that much of flicker problems. To me, this game had it slightly worse. But it is an 8-bit NES game, so that's to be expected. But yeah, this, I mean, this game's pretty tough still. I mean, it's not as hard as one, but it's more fair. I mean, there's not much I can say about Mega Man 2. If you haven't played Mega Man 2, you're a fucking loser! You need to shut the fuck up! Thanks, Pen. See what I mean when I say Silent Rob is an ignorant jackass? Okay, I can't even believe you're even watching this thinking about, Hey, should I play Mega Man 2? No, you should fucking definitely play Mega Man 2 or I'm gonna fucking beat your ass, okay? There's no fucking question here. Well, the only question to me is, do the Mega Man games appeal to you? Because not everyone is going to enjoy the Mega Man games. Different people have different tastes in games to you, you know. It's really all a matter of opinion. Okay, that's where his Mega Man 2 review ends, and yeah, he didn't even show getting to the boss. But I can hardly call this a review. In fact, I can sum up this review now. Mega Man 2 is a fucking amazing game. You need to fucking play this game, and play it on difficult, or else I'm gonna beat your ass. No good elaboration on the gameplay, power-ups, bosses, or any of that. Now, let's move on to his Mega Man 3 review. A lot of people consider this their favorite Mega Man game, and I honestly don't know why. Well, this game did do what any good sequel would do, take the basic concept and add new elements and story twists to the game to keep the gameplay familiar yet fresh. Personally, I think Mega Man 3 succeeded in that respect, but I do kind of agree with you that I prefer 2 over it, but that's just my opinion. <coughs> um, right off the bat you notice something's missing. A fucking intro. When a game that you released two years prior has a fucking intro, there's no real reason why this game should not have one. Um, it basically, this looks like Mega Man 1's title screen with a 3 underneath it, okay? Oh, oh, let's take Mega Man 1, put a 3 underneath it, and we're done. No, fuck you motherfuckers, okay? Wow, you sound like you're stressing out over a title screen. Title screens and intros don't make the game, you know. As long as the gameplay is good, that should be all that matters. Where's my fucking intro? Where's my building? Where's my fucking Mega Man standing on top with his hair in the wind, okay? None of that shit's here! You fucking lied to me, motherfuckers! This ain't a sequel! All because of this game not having an intro? And when you said you lied to me, did Capcom ever say this game would have an intro as well as Mega Man 2? Okay, this is like three steps back, right when you turn it on. So how can this be your favorite Mega Man game? Alright? You start the game, and you see you see the Robot Masters. It's probably the best, the most well-rounded Robot Masters in any of the Mega Man games, but I, I don't like them as much as Mega Man 2. They've just never been that good to me. Like, for instance, Snake Man. Snake Man looks like a mascot that would stand outside of a pet store, basically. His level's pretty sweet, and his song's good, but... I mean, and then you got losers like Hard Man. What's hard? Is this dick hard? <laughs> Seriously, that joke was really predictable knowing what you're like, and not to mention really pathetic. 
I mean, my dick crit I mean, my dick gets hard too. You don't see me fucking trying to kill Mega Man about it. Whoa, whoa, TMI, Silent Rob. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. What's he supposed to be? Um, you, but I mean, every Mega Man game has, you know, one or two stupid robot masters. I mean, Shadow Man's awesome. He's a ninja, and ninjas are always awesome. Um, Spark Man's cool. Gemini Man is also awesome because he can clone himself. Some people hate Top Man. I always liked him. I thought he's pretty cool. I, I think Dreidel Man is probably a better name for him. Um, but then, wouldn't Jewish people take offense by that? Um, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, you don't know what the storyline is in this game unless, like, you have the instruction manual. So, if you rented games in the late '80s, early '90s, like a lot of people did, you had, and it didn't come with a st instruction manual. Um. You had no idea what the fuck was going on in this game. But Mega Man was never really a story-driven franchise to begin with. I mean, the game is just the usual take down eight Robot Masters and then defeat Dr. Wily. That's really all you need to know. Mega Man's stories were never really that important to begin with. However, I will say Mega Man 3's story was probably the strongest out of the classic series. Um, as you can tell, this game added the slide move, which is actually one of my favorite um, things. I was kind of disappointed they took that out of Mega Man 9, but we'll get to that later. Um, I don't know. This game's always been kind of weird to me. Um, for instance, right off the bat, what does this have to do with tops? I mean, it looks like we're in, like, a greenhouse of death right now. I mean, what is this supposed to be, really? Okay, I will agree that this stage is a bit weird, but the other stages do have some personality to them. Like Snake Man's stage, which the whole design is green and scaly looking, and Magnet Man's stage has loads of magnet space. So by going for Top Man's stage, I feel you picked a poor example. I mean, this game is kind of lacking its own personality, whereas Mega Man 1 started it and Mega Man 2 perfected it, Mega Man 3 didn't really do much with it. Um, for instance, like this room right here, has anybody ever died? in this room. Like, I don't even know if those spikes kill you, because I've never fallen into them! Well, duh. Common sense would tell you not to jump on those spikes. Why even bother making a statement like that? Okay, this game is, like, so completely easy and pathetic compared to, like, 2 that- WHAT?! Are you saying that Mega Man 3 is easier than Mega Man 2? Because I've played both, and I can beat 2 much easier than I can beat 3. 3 has longer levels, tougher bosses, and is less generous of lives. So how is it completely easy? I can't even put it into words, people. Um, like for instance, this part right here. Okay, you get these two enemies on the screen, the whole game comes to a fucking crawl. Until you kill one of them. Okay, so, like, if, if your game can't handle what's going on in the screen right now, don't fucking put it on the screen, because it ruins the game. Oh yeah, because that one moment of flicker totally ruins the rest of the game. Um, Mega Man 3 has a lot of parts like this, and I just don't understand why they kept them in. But like I said, it's kind of lacking its own personality. Um, Giant Cat of Death, yeah, that's great and all, but I've seen that in Mega Man 2 already. Um, but it was better. It was a giant dog that breathed that breathed fire. Okay, um, it would totally it would eat that fucking cat, and fucking it would eat the cat in like two seconds. Okay, so a cat throwing yarn at you in a greenhouse. It doesn't. You see what I'm saying? Like it's so weird compared to Mega Man 2. Um, one thing the game does have in, that is really amazing is the soundtrack. Um, I would even go so far as to say the soundtrack is on par with Mega Man 2's. So I'm not the only one who likes this game's soundtrack as much as Mega Man 2's? Awesome! Um, some people disagree, um, and I don't really care because you're wrong. Uh... He's at it again! You think this game's soundtrack is on par with Mega Man 2? Cool, that's your opinion, but you're stating it as if it's a fact. Other people have their opinions as well, you know. So don't treat yours as if it's superior to everyone else's. <sighs>
This guy is unfucking believable. <laughs> okay, this soundtrack is awesome. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, people. It's just it's always been a weird game to me. Okay, who keeps hitting the rewind button? And it's easy. Like we're already at the end of the stage, whereas like in Mega Man Two. Like, you'd get to Heat Man's level and be stuck on it for half an hour trying to do the disappearing blocks. This level doesn't really have much to it. Again, I must commentate about you picking a poor comparison, because you compared the easiest stage from this game to one of the hardest from Mega Man 2. If you'd have compared Heat Man's stage to one of the tougher ones from this game, like Magnet Man's stage, for example, then it would have been more of a fair comparison. Again, Top Man wasn't the best choice of levels to represent this game. And Dreidel Man's gonna try to take me out here. And he never has. It's just, it's an easy game. I mean, there's really... If you, if you can't beat Mega Man 3, you should probably stop playing video games altogether. Oh, come on! Mega Man 3 isn't that easy. It still offers a challenge. Not as much as the X series, but... I couldn't beat this game for a while, and yet I had beaten many other games before that. Granted, I have beat this game now, but my point still stands. This game isn't too easy. But on that note, I'm sure it's easy if you have the holy hardcore gaming skills of Silent Rob. Um, see, same basic principle. Um, Mega Man 3 kind of just polished Mega Man 2 and said, hey, here's a brand new game. No, don't fucking lie to me. Okay, it's the same thing. What a bunch of crap. This is not the same as the other games. The bosses are different, the levels are different, the story is different, the weapons are different, the only thing that's the same is the basic concept. That would be like complaining about Sonic the Hedgehog 2 saying it's the same game as Sonic 1. Top spin. You get top spin, the most fucking useless weapon in the entire game, until you get to the last boss. And and then it kills the last boss in one hit. You know what I mean? Like, so what's the point of this weapon? They must have thought, hey, you can't use this weapon for anything else, so let's kill the last boss with it. Have you tried beating Shadow Man without the top spin? Ain't that easy. I don't get it. So, I don't know. Weird shit in the game like that. Um, it's a good game. It's still probably my second or third favorite in the series, but... There's just not that much innovation. Yeah, they added Rush of the Dog in it, but he's basically the items from Mega Man 2. Um, so, no innovation there. I don't know. But this game's a masterpiece compared to Mega Man 4. Okay, at this part where he's loading Mega Man 4, this could have easily been edited out in Windows Movie Maker. If it doesn't have any purpose in the video, it's filler. Mega Man 4 fucking sucks, okay? I'm sorry, people. Um... Now, while I do think Mega Man 4 is my least favourite out of the NES games, and some points I do agree with Rob on, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a bad game. Um, this game was released one year later, um, probably because they wanted to rush the fucking thing out the door just to get a quick bug. Um, this game sucks. I can't stand this game. Even as a kid, after coming playing Mega Man 3 and going to this one, you could tell, even as a kid, that this game wasn't as good. Like, it wasn't as good then, and it's still not as good now. And if this is your favorite Mega Man, you're a fucking idiot, okay? God damn it. Mega Man 4 may not be my favorite in the series, but some people out there might like it better. Are they idiots? No! It's just their opinions! This guy is unfucking believable You're gonna tell me you like this game better than Mega Man 2 or 3? Why? There's nothing in it that's better. Okay, yeah, it has an intro, which is technically better than Mega Man 3, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really tell you much, and it kind of tries to give the backstory of Mega Man, 
Um, which they kind of contradict in the series later on. And they're like, hey, it never really happened that way. And we're like, okay, whatever. Um, first of all, you're presented with the most pitiful robot masters in the entire fucking series. Okay, what is this fuck? Am I on a fucking short bus right now? I mean, what am I fucking looking at? Bunch of fucking retards, okay? Bright Man looks like a fucking Cabbage Patch Kid. Okay? Toad Man? I'm fighting frogs? I'm fighting frogs in dust? Okay, are we out of fucking ideas here, people? Okay, get your fucking shit together. The only two good robot masters are Skull Man and Pharaoh Man. Heck, I would go as far as to say Pharaoh Man is the only good one. And, they're, and they just get fucking destroyed in two seconds by Mega Man. Actually, I beg to differ. Pharaoh Man, without his weakness, is actually quite an aggressive fighter. Not to mention he's fun to fight. And Skull Man could be quite tough without his weakness at times. Because he's got some tricky to dodge attacks. So... Okay, I don't know. Ring Man? Ring Man? What does that even mean? Okay, none of these guys... They're, none of them are good, people. Wait. Didn't you not long ago say Skullman and Pharaoh Man were good, and now you say none of them are good? Contradiction for the loss. I will tell you that this game is harder um, than Mega Man 2 or 3, um, but that's about it. Um, the game doesn't really have it much else to it. Um, you have a charge in this one. But the problem with this charge is it makes the game not Mega Man anymore. Um, in the other Mega Man games, you would get the powers from the robots, and you would use them against the other robots. The trouble is, in this game, what's the point in doing that when you can just kill every robot master in this whole fucking game with your regular Mega Buster? Yeah, the Charge Buster totally ruins the game. You know what would make it so much better? If it was optional- Oh wait, it is! If you don't like the Charge Buster, then the answer is simple. DON'T USE IT! But if you choose not to use it, then that means you have to artificially force a challenge on yourself. Oh, go away, game dude. I've already got Silent Rob's stupidity on my hands. I don't need you pestering me as well. Anyways, back to Silent Rob. The Charge Buster may be an easier way to beat the first boss, but when it comes to the other bosses, I always found it easier to use the robot's weapons anyways. And also, you could beat all the bosses with the Mega Buster in the previous games as well, you know? And I'm not exaggerating here, people. You can do that. Okay? And the level designs are this disgusting. What am I looking at here? Yellow fucking purple fucking bullshit? Is this Elton John's living room? What the fuck? It sucks. Okay? And here's another one of those parts that I was talking about in Mega Man 3 that just bugged the fuck out of me. Okay, look at the choppiness, and look at the sprite flicker on this. Okay, and I will tell you too that this is actually moving in slow motion right now. Okay, if you're fucking trying to make a part, and it's not working, and it's going in slow motion, and you don't fix it, you better not release it in the final game, okay? Because I'm gonna come back and talk about it 20 years later in a YouTube video, and that'll show you, motherfucker. Oh wow, talking about it almost 20 years later in a YouTube video, I'm sure the game developers are really scared. NOT! You fuck. You just can't go 5 seconds without dropping the F-bomb, can you? Okay, I know Angry Video Game Nerd and Arm821 swear a lot, but they at least do it in moderation when it's funny. They don't just, like, impulsively say the F-word all the time like what Silent Rob does. This guy swears more than NC-17 Productions, and that's saying a lot. And you definitely don't want me to fucking talk about you in a YouTube video, that's for sure. Come on, people. Okay, this is better than Mega Man 3. And what planet? The planet of re retarded. He's an asshole. Well put. Not only is he showing disrespect to others' opinions, but he is also making jokes about retarded people. Why was this guy so popular? Okay, this part right here has never even, like, killed me. It's so easy and stupid and pointless.
And together with this horrible fucking music, man, Mega Man 4, Mega Man 4's quality in the music went down so far after Mega Man 3, it wasn't even funny. But yeah, you know, like, the whole game is one, like, color, like... What a bunch of crap! If the game was, as you say, one color, all we'd be seeing is just a plain screen of that one color. There are more than one colors, you know. Okay, this level is blue. Congratulations, you know how to use the color blue. How about some other colors? Maybe two or three of them? No, the ladder's blue. The spikes are blue. It's blue, okay? Give me a fucking break. And then the fucking background is fucking piss green. And before you know it, the level's over. Okay? Do you see what I'm talking about with this game? And then you fight the boss, and... God, I always... That was always annoying to me that the, the life filling up in this game was, like, extremely loud and even took up... It was over the music, too, so... I hate that. I mean, this boss is easy, people. I'm not even really trying, and I'm still winning. You see what I mean about the Mega Buster, though? But just like with Mega Man 3, you picked a poor example. This game has some tougher robots, like Drill Man and Dive Man. But Dustman is one of the easiest in the game. I mean, it does this kind of ridiculous damage on every one of the bosses, so... Why the fuck do I want to use any of the weapons and actually do the game like it's meant to be when I can just blast through the game with my Mega Buster? Like I said earlier, the game gives you a choice. You don't have to use the Mega Buster. I personally prefer to use the weapons myself. I don't know, people. This game sucks. I'm sorry. Okay, and this bullshit Dr. Kosak storyline. Okay, oh, it's not it's not Wily this time, I swear to God. Fuck you, okay? I was six years old, and I was like, uh, you're fucking lying to me. It's Dr. Wily, don't fucking... Who the fuck's Dr. Kosak? Alright, I mean... I'll go to a different level and show you what I'm talking about. Toad Man. I'm not gonna make it to this boss, because I'm gonna cut this video off in a minute, but... This boss doesn't even attack you. Like, he just stands there and lets you just pummel his ass until he dies. Um, here we go with the blandness of the level design again. The, the colors and everything just looks really murky in this game. Um, and you have, you have your rush coil again, which is the same as it was for Mega Man 3, but later on you get the rush jet, and it's different from Mega Man 3, and it only flies in one direction at a time, and you can't change um, the direction you're going in. Um, Mega Man 3's it was fully controllable. Why take steps back? But you can change the altitude. I think it was because the rush jet in Mega Man 3 was considered broken, so they nerfed it a bit. And besides, I thought you liked games harder. And this, you know, this whole game just feels like three steps back from Mega Man 3. Oh, uh, rain that fucking blows you around. This isn't challenging. No, it isn't. I mean, it might be challenging for some, but not when you have the holy hardcore gaming sk Oh, fuck it, that joke's getting old. And that's where his review abruptly ends. I'll stop here, because if I talk about his reviews of Mega Man's 5 and 6, I'll probably just end up repeating myself. So, what did I think of these reviews? Well, they were pretty poor, to tell the truth. His Mega Man 2 review wasn't reviewing. It was pretty much just saying the game is awesome and insulting people who haven't played it. Mega Man 3, while I did respect his opinion on the game, he repeated himself a lot and he nitpicked too much about the game being too similar. As for Mega Man 4, the way he was stating his opinion as a fact and calling others retarded if they liked the game, he just came off as a complete douchebag. And that's the main reason why I don't like Silent Rob, because I think he's a twat. And I don't like how he always tries to sound badass as well. 
I mean, he swears a lot and makes sexual references. And to try and, you know, sound hard, I would compare him to Chad Warden, but I think that would be taking it a bit too far. <sighs> it might take me a while to recover from this one, but I'm sure I'll manage. So this is Chad Soft and I have saying goodbye, take care, and Nintendo, when will you make a new Star Fox game for the Wii already? It's official. You suck.